This video is going to be about the difference between a radiologist and a radiographer. So whenever I tell people what I am, I always say like, I'm a radiographer, I'm a radiology technologist, and they think that I'm talking about I'm a doctor because I read x-rays and stuff. Nope, that is not what I do. I am a radiology tech. One of the reasons why it's so confusing is because the names are so similar, radiographer and radiologist, and you can also, you can call us different things. Okay, so I am a radiology technologist. We can also be called a radiographer, a rad tech, an RT radiology technologist. So those are some of the names. Some people call us radiology technicians, and it's funny because we get offended whenever somebody calls us a technician because we're highly trained and we like the word technologist better. So we liked going by radiology technologist better um, because we have to go through a lot of schooling and have to know a lot of stuff to become a radiology technologist. So we are more than just button pushers. We know about radiation, you guys. That's really, really important. <laughs> we position the patients into a certain position. We have to make sure that everything is centered and properly uh, collimated is what we call it. Like we, we cone down the x-ray beam to the specific part of the body so that we don't overexpose the patient to radiation. So, which is really important. We also know how to set the technique of the x-ray beam to make it so that we can see the certain parts of the body. So like, we use a different technique for like imaging like the fingers or the hands because it's mostly bone and it's really small compared to like imaging the skull or imaging like your abdomen or your chest. It's, everything is different and you have to know all of that. You have to learn all of that in school. You have to like understand the physics of x-rays to be able to work with them every single day. We're not taught to read x-rays, but we can see like big things. Like we can see if something's fractured. We can see like um, if somebody's lung has collapsed or something. We're not allowed to tell the patient anything. Patients like always ask me like, oh, is it broken? Or, oh, what do you see? I can't tell you what I see. I can, I'm, I'll be like, oh, well, um, it looks good to me. Like everything's centered, um, nothing's clipped. Like I got all, everything. <laughs> And that's what I tell them, and they're like, well, what, what's wrong with it? I'm like, sorry, I can't tell you. We can't read the x-rays, but we can see them enough to notify the radiologist, like, put the x-ray as a stat if it's, like, something that the radiologist really needs to see if it's, like, kind of an emergency. You need to go to school to become a rad tech. Um, you can either go and get, like, a certificate, an associate's degree, or even a bachelor's degree, and the pay is on average throughout this entire country and everything, um, $59,520 a year. And so I'm a recent graduate, I'm definitely not making that much. <laughs> Getting an associate's degree is the most common, and that's what I got. When I actually got into the program, it was two years. And then you can, once you graduate, you can just immediately start getting a job and that's what I did. I graduated in December of 2019 and I got into the workforce just in time to be working through this crazy pandemic. One thing that I wish that people knew, people don't really know the difference between different types of imaging so I wanted to try to make this video to help you guys understand a little bit of what just I do. So rad techs only deal with x-rays um, but we can also cross-train into different modalities of diagnostic medical imaging, such as ultrasound, MRI, CT, nuclear medicine, etc. There's so many different things that we can end up doing. And I am really wanting to make a, a separate videos on the different modalities because I think that diagnostic medical imaging is really, really interesting. And I, I want to like tell the world about it. I feel like it's really cool. You have to go to school for like two more years if you want to be a ultrasound tech. So like that's the same thing with like MRI because it is so different. The science behind MRI or the science behind ultrasound or the science behind like nuke med is so different and the machine is the machines are so different 
and setting techniques are so different that you can't switch over to another, like, from one day you decide to be an x-ray tech, another day you decide to be an MRI tech. Like, it, it doesn't work that way. Just so you guys know. Basically, you can kind of think of a radiology technologist as, like, the nurse of the radiology department. <laughs> so we do a lot of the interaction with the patients um, and we don't get paid as much. <laughs> so basically the difference between a radiology technologist and a radiologist is a radiology technologist is not a doctor and a radiologist is a doctor. So the prep classes for a radiographer, some prereqs could include anatomy and physiology one and two, English, math, communications, sociology slash psychology, and then during the actual program, the basic things that you have to learn are radiation physics. So you have to, you really have to understand physics. I mean, you don't have to take physics as a prerequisite, but I did and it helped the program be way easier for me. So you have to learn radiation physics 1 and 2, radiobiology, so what radiation does to the body, which was really cool and I want to make some videos about that because it's really really interesting. Um principles of radiology 1 and 2. We have to learn about um like digital radiography um and the computer systems that we use to send images to the radiologist, which is the doctor who reads them. And one crazy thing is that, one crazy thing about the field right now is that we mainly just use digital radiography. We don't use film anymore. I, going to school, have never even dealt with film at all. We had to take patient care classes, pathology classes, pharmacology classes, and then especially positioning classes. You have to know how to position everything correctly to include every aspect of the anatomy that's necessary, as well as like knowing when you like rotated something, like over rotated or under rotated. That's like the hardest, one of the hardest things about radiology, being a x-ray tech, is knowing when knowing if the image is good. So that's very, very important. After you finish your classes, you are able to sit for the ARRT registry exam, which consists of 220 questions and you have to get a 75% or higher to pass. And once you pass, you just have to apply for the state license and then you're able to work as an x-ray tech. After I would say like three years of training because of the prerequisites that you have to take. But yeah, I personally really like the field of radiology technology and I like that I am not the doctor and I don't have to take work home to me and I'm able to like have time for hobbies and just like hang out with family. Yeah, I feel... Like, it's way better suited to my personality type. That's why I decided to become an x-ray tech. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to a radiologist. What is a radiologist? Radiographer is the tech, radiology technologist. Those are all the names for it. And then radiologist is the actual doctor who is highly, highly trained, who went to medical school and they're an actual doctor, and they are the ones that read x-rays. They don't, they not only read x-rays, they also read ultrasounds, MRIs, and CT images, and nuke med images. They read everything, so they know everything. Um, and then they also help out with exams. So they read these images and they diagnose and everything like they're able to actual actually diagnose things so like they perform exams on patients but most of the time they're kind of in their like dark room where they're like sitting in front of their computer and it's super super dark so that they can see the images as clear as possible on the computer screen radiologists need way more school than rad techs you need to get a four-year bachelor's degree 
um, and then you need to go to four years of medical school, and then you need to do a residency program that usually lasts four years. So basically it's like 12 years of schooling, because they are doctors, they're just specialized doctors. And then you have to pass a lot of tests like the MCAT, the USMILE, and other tests and certifications that I don't really know much about because I'm not a radiologist. So the crazy thing is, radiologists get paid all around, on average, $300,365 a year as of September of 2019. Yeah, I don't get paid those big bucks, uh, but they have so much more liability and responsibility and if they miss something, it's really serious. Like, if you miss a tumor or something, a person can end up dying of cancer because they didn't get treated or something. So it is very... It's a very high-stakes job, and I am really glad I'm not that. I don't think I could be a doctor. So classes that radiologists take for undergraduate is usually pre-med, so they have to take like English, math, biolo biology, physics, chemistry, like genetics, I think, like pathophysiology, chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, I don't even know, like really, really hard classes during their bachelor's degree so that they can take the MCAT and then get into a medical school and then medical school is really hard and then they have to get into the residency. So yeah, basically that's the difference. So I am a rad tech. I take the pictures. Radiologists are the doctors who actually read them and they got all of that training to be able to read them. So yeah. That is my video. So I am planning on making more videos on the different modalities of diagnostic medical imaging, which will be, I find it really fun. So I'll be making videos on that. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.